Wow, come everyone. Today we have an amazing upgrade for the Lightning Marksman using the Ward setup. Now looking behind me, you can see my warding went from 15,000 slowly reaching 30,000 as we gain warding as we critical strike. Yes, this is a huge update for the defensiveness for the warding setup for the Marksman. And now we're super tanky and also unkillable in most of the Echoes. And what I do is I'll go through the item choices and also different combination after hours of testing using offline characters. We spent a lot of time testing and I'm really excited to share this particular setup with you guys and let's go through some of the replays. So coming over to over 2600 corruption and I really wanted to make a higher corruption so we can see how powerful and also how different the new setup is compared to the previous setup. Right away you can see I was sitting on 15,000 ward and now as I hit enemies and as a critical strike, my ward will keep going up. And this particular setup is extremely safe as you progress through the map and this allows me to clear 2,600 plus corruption with ease using the Lightning Marksman with warding setup. Now compared to previously, after several testing, I was able to reach 2,000 corruption without this particular combo. Having this combo means we're extremely safe and also able to deal tons of damage AoE. So as a brief summary, what is happening is we have switched the rings into the third eye ring, which allows us to have a 30% chance to gain ward as we critical strike. And we are critical strike 100% of the time, pretty much. And followed by that, we're also using a unique amulet that also allows us to gain ward as we critical strike. And this is extremely powerful by combining all three items. Now let's have a look at some of the demonstrations against the story boss and also against the shade. So fast forwarding a little bit, you can see here as we clear the little pillars of the story boss, we don't really have a problem. And here as we stick onto the boss, we're actually gaining more warding than what the boss can deal in terms of damage. And yes, here you can see that we still deal a lot of damage against the story boss. But a lot of our viewers have stated that, that it is actually more better to do testings against the shade with higher corruptions. And here we'll be going through some of the shade testings against higher corruptions. And what you guys are going to notice is after multiple testing and also hours of testing actually, we have realized that over 2000 plus corruption against the shade, it is actually better to swap into a more offensive setup to kill the shade before it can deal most of the damage. And here you just have to dodge one of the spells and then you can follow up with tons of damage. Now there is a very important highlight. Sometimes a lot of viewers will see our videos and realize that we're killing the boss super fast, even over 2,600 corruption. And this is the case with the story boss without any adjustment of the gears. But what I really want to disclose and also you know, highlight to you guys is that it is actually very difficult to kill the shade over 2,000 corruption, simply because the shade actually does a lot of damage. And here I purposely added additional Replace to demonstrate to you guys that we have done tons of testing against different type of shade with different casting and also spells. And what you're going to see is after charging several different set of items, we have failed many times using different combination of items, including the warding setup that is introduced. So what is going to happen is you're going to see that some of the shade, they one shot us no matter how much warding you gain. And some other shade, they deal way more damage than what we can sustain using variety of build. And I really want to share this with you guys because this way you notice that the build is not all powerful and also super broken. There are still limitations after 2000 corruption. And we have been constantly testing different item setups against the boss to give you guys the best result. And as a brief summary, finally, we have decided to go more offense over defense. And this allows us to push down the boss before they have more mechanics to kill us. And in order to do that, after multiple testings, and also you can see in the replays, we have decided to use two different setups, one for the mapping, one against the boss. And yes, you will be dying quite often against those bosses over 2000 corruption. So I think it's a good change of pace and also the guide videos to show you guys not only does the build does a lot of damage with successful runs, there are multiple fails behind it, just so that you guys know that the build is not supposed to win and also survive any encounters. It will have its short falls because we do a lot of damage, but at the same time, you can be a little squishy using different setups. So coming over to build this guide, you can see there will be two different variety of build. One is aimed to gain more warding against different mappings in the echoes. 
The second variation is going to be more squishy and won't gain warding, but in return, you'll be doing the most damage using different unique items. And on the second part of the video, we will also talk about the potential for future nerfs with possible bugs with detonating arrows. A lot of the viewers have been speaking to me about this, and I do want to briefly touch up on this. And also our plans and also more testings in the future if the build does get nerfed for damage. So coming over to our latest build. Because I'm assuming you guys are familiar with the marksman, I don't have to explain too much on items. We'll focus on the change of items. So right away you guys can notice we're using two ring of the third eye. The unique effect of this ring allows us to gain up to 18 ward on critical hits with 30% chance, and you can have two of those rings. Those rings will give you a massive boost of critical chance, in exchange you will lose a lot of critical strike multiplier, and this will reduce your damage. In combination with the Soul Gambler Fallency, we'll be getting way more critical chance than we needed. You can see here 900% critical chance. So every hit is pretty much gonna guarantee the crit. But at the same time, you will gain ward on critical hit up to 15 coming from this amulet. This is how we're able to stick onto the target and gain over 30,000 ward as we progress through the map as we hit enemies. And just to show you guys this combination action, so this is against a 2600 corruption. As we stick onto enemies, they don't really survive long enough. But if they do survive long enough, you can easily get over 30,000 wood using those combinations. Now as we come back to the build, there are also some minor changes with the build. We have removed the experimental effects that gains us more mana as we use potions. Because this setup is ideally for mapping, you're not really going to pop potion that often. So it's better to just have mana regen and also lining damage and also more health for more defensiveness. Together with the relic that is adjusted for more elemental resistance, you can see the current setup doesn't have enough resistance to 75% because we didn't change all the idols. If you want your 75% resistance, you can adjust the idols in doing so. And finally, we went for tier 7 vitality on the helmet. So those are the major changes for this particular new setup. And as you're going to see in the replays, and I'm sure you guys have seen the replays, you now become unkillable in most of the echo mapping. And this is very important for the wording setup to push for high corruption. Now, there is one important factor I want to stress out for the wording build. So previously, as I was doing some testings, I want to show you guys this particular replay testing. So what you're going to see is I'm currently using a life gain on melee hit FX on the wording build, and that is not good. If you're using the warding setup, you do not want to have the effects on your weapon which gains your life as you hit, because you actually have more health, and more health means less warding gain. And there seems to be a bug interaction with how much ward you can gain if you're life stealing. So this is one of the biggest highlights I want to share with you guys. I was testing the build multiple times, and it just seems like something's not right. So this is what I meant. You do not want to have these effects on your weapon because this will mess up with how much ward you gain, and this will max up with the low life of gaining warding. So this is actually a very bad FX if you're playing the warding build, but this is one of the best FX if you're playing the HP health regen build to gain lots of health. So that's why if you look at the FX of the weapons, you can see now we apply armor shredding and also we apply shock, because if you come over to the second setup, applying shock over here will give us 1% more damage per stack of shock. Of course, the ring itself will also apply shock. This will just give us more chances of shock to do even more damage very quickly. Now, as regards to the skills and also passives, we haven't changed anything. But in the future, as we're going to speak on the second part, if there is a bug with detonating arrow and the developers have stated that, we'll adjust accordingly to look for more damage and also to look for different items. Similarly, guys, we have kept the blessings the same. So this way, you don't have to do massive changes. Now coming over to the second boss setup. So you might have seen in the first demonstration of the videos, you can see there's a lot of fail attempts against the boss and we tried multiple items as you can see in my inventories. I even tried eight different combinations of different rings to see which of the combination is better. So here against the mapping, you're going for mana region and also throwing mana cost reduction. So you can constantly be throwing your traps. But against the boss, after trying several combinations, it seems that you cannot be gaining enough warding and also to survive the boss one-shot mechanics. And sometimes, if you're like me, you don't like dodging a lot, then that is not great, right? 
So here there is a method to deal with bosses, and that is to do enough damage before they kill you or before they do anything. So the current bossing setup is going to use those three unique items. The unique rain siphon of anguish and also the unique belt will give us the doom stacks. So 5% more melee damage multiplier per stack of doom. And this take us up, up to 20 to 25% increased melee damage. Now do keep in mind guys, you might not need to have this many legendary potential for those items. It just happens during the recording of the video, we had those effects on those items. You can remove some effects like the void resistance over here, and also effects like the narcotic of physical resistance. You can find more resistance onto your idols. So don't be too worried that you do not have all the effects onto those rings. The ideal setup is just to deal more damage against the shade. Now over here, we're using the Oceania, the second ring, which allows us to have 1% increased damage per stack of shock. Together with abilities to apply more shock on hit and also increase shock duration, this ring will also give us some additional mana regen together with the ability to craft with more lightning damage. You can see the resistance are not that important on those rings, and you can also switch this into more mana regen or even more throwing attack speed. Now as for most of the other items, they have been kept the same compared to the previous build. Now over here, I also want to introduce to you guys a new system on Discord. So we're looking into a bounty system where players can be listing bounties and also listing what they're looking for. And depending on the criterias, and depending on the criterias they're looking for, here's the example. I'm currently looking for a stronger warlock build after the nerf of the warding. And this way, if any of the players or members is able to find or create a build themselves, they can claim my bounty and gain a special reward. This can be related to gold in-game or maybe a special title like the Bounty Hunter in our Discord channel. So the goal of this new system is so players can be finding ways to share different concepts, testing different ideas, and seeking help from each other, and then getting a small reward or maybe a special title within the Discord channel as we find ways to make the game and also builds even better for last epoch. So if you guys haven't joined us on our Discord channel, make sure you come over here to the links below. I have provided two links just in, term, just in case when one of them stop working. And once you guys have joined us, explore tons of tabs with lots of information, lots of tips related to last epoch, and also Path of Exile, Path of Exile 2 to come. Now on the topic of a variety of builds, so we have several videos posted and also updated for different builds, including the life stealing setup, which is very powerful. I do recommend coming over to the description below, which will give you guys tons of links, different guides. So if you don't like the ward setup and if you find those items too costly, I recommend coming over to the latest build for the life stealing setup. It is much cheaper and it is also very powerful. At the same time, we had a lot of viewers asking, hey man, what if I don't have any of the legendary potentials? What if I don't have those items? Coming over to this video, which have six different setups. The first to the third setup will have items that is available that doesn't require you to have any unique items except those daggers. You don't even need to have legendary potential on those daggers, but those will help a lot. So those particular setup are going to be generic setups for you guys to start the build and can push over for 500 corruptions. And finally guys, in case you are following the previous Lightning Maximum update for 2000 corruption using the cheaper setup, the cheaper setup will work up to 2000 corruption. But in the future, you know, fights, what you're going to see is you're not regenerating enough ward. And if you do not have the entire setup, just having the amulet or one or two of the rings will help you a lot if you're transitioning coming from the previous setup. So I have those available in the links below. Now coming over to a brief summary of the score rotations for the build. Well, it is going to be pretty straightforward. So similar to before, guys, you'll be dashing a lot as you dash your game mana it's very important to keep dashing to gain more mana. And just throw your traps, you now can live heal with your ward. And this is actually very powerful as your ward steal when hitting enemies. Now, when facing strong enemies, you do want to cast your smoke bomb, which will remove your particular chill effect on your boots to give you even more attack. Together with tons of buffs, it is both survivable, survivability, and also deals tons of damage. Now in terms of the boss fight, I strongly recommend changing your setup. Because if you're using the previous setup, 
What you might notice is we might not be able to do enough damage and the boss can still one shot you before you gain enough ward. So there are several testings done and I want to show you guys the comparison. So ideally guys, you want to do enough damage quickly before the boss takes you down and this way with some lucky dodges, you can one shot the boss or kill it within 7 or 8 seconds before he does too many mechanics and gets you into trouble. Now before we finish the video, a lot of the viewers have directed me to this video from Mac Muffin Gaming and he has done some testing which is quite interesting. So let me briefly summarize what he has tested and also what seems to be, you know, discovered. So what he was saying is that each arrow stuck onto the enemies will provide us with 20% resistance reduction against the enemy. And by stacking over 10, 20 arrows, this is how we deal tremendous higher damage than expected from this particular description. Similarly, he's suggesting that maybe this particular perk is gaining 10 times more increased damage than what is expected. So those are the two potential bugs Mark Muffin have suggested that could be happening to the build. So after having a look at this video and also those possibilities, there are several things we can do for the marksman. So firstly, let's wait for the developers to see if those are bugged. And if those are bugs and this gets fixed, we'll be adjusting the build. And of course, right now the build deals way more damage than expected. And yes, it is a possibility that there are some interactions with the build that we're not aware of and also the developers have not planned. So ideally, if this build does get nerfed in the future and the developers have confirmed this, we'll be doing more testings to find other ways within the skill tree and also within different perks to deal even more damage. Together with adjusting the skills and also items from defensiveness to more offensiveness, we'll be using different unique items and also different combinations of FXs to adjust for this. Now, after discussion with my friends and also myself doing some testings, we have determined that even if those perks are adjusted and also nerfed, we will still deal some of the highest damage in the game compared to most of the other classes and also other builds. So rest assured guys, we will be adjusting for this if things get changed. And during the meantime, it is a little harder to do testing if we were to remove those points. Because if we remove those points, we don't even get the 10% resistance reduction. And if we remove those points, then we can't really start mapping. So what we're planning is, we're planning to see if the developers come up with an update. And if there are notes available, we'll adjust the build accordingly. Now what I do now is, I'll provide you guys with a series of testing replays and also demonstrations using offline characters. This is to allow us to do more detailed testings and here you can see in the final parts of the testings you can see us changing variety of items and also dying. So don't see the build as all powerful. There will be some downfalls of the build after over 2600 corruption. And this is to be expected because things get very difficult with over 3000% more health and also more damage. Now, if you guys find my videos and also guides helpful and also want to support my passion in making more guides and also more videos for the last epoch and also more games to come like Path of Exile, please consider joining me on Patreon and also here I have created my Ko-Fi page. You can also support me directly through donations, but supporting me continuously with one of those memberships will mean a lot for my future updated videos and to become financially sustainable so I can be continuing making videos for you guys and doing what I love the most and that is to share and also teach our communities as I dive into different games and making more guides for you guys. And as you guys are gonna see in the future, I'll have different ranks and also perk advantages and also special events and also special features for members like account reviews, perfecting the build for you guys and also co-op time play and also even special future videos for you guys on your special build for different members.